Today on Pots and Trials, we're catching up with Veg in Pots, and that's brought to you with the support of Cobra Garden, Dalek, and Mr. Fothergills. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. Well, today I thought we'd just have a quick catch up at some of the veg and salads that we're growing in pots and containers. We grow the main veg down at Dennis's on his plot where we visit on a regular basis, but I just thought it'd be quite nice to have a few things growing outside the back door. And if nothing else, it shows that you don't need to have a garden to grow veg. If you've just got a, an area, a little path at the back of the house or a patio or a balcony, there's still quite a lot that you can grow so you've got that lovely fresh produce. So it's been quite windy here of late. We've, things have got really battered. So I'm just picking them over to take off one or two of the leaves, but we've got all sorts. We've got some little peas there, a dwarf pea called one pint. We've got some pods there that are now starting to fill out. So we'll soon get a, a picking of peas. We've got some spring onions coming along nicely. Various types of kale, which we'll pick when they're small, not so much for the winter, but we'll use them in salads and stir fries. We've got some ruby chard there. Again, we can use it in salads or we can let the stems mature and use them in the autumn. We can braise them. Pot full of beetroot there, which again, we'll get for the lovely globes. Then we've got at the back here, a courgette in a pot. We've actually had a couple off there and there's a few more just coming along there. So they'll be great. And then I've got some beans in pots. These are some dwarf French beans. These are the ones that have been scorched a little bit by the wind, but they're going to be fine. It's, it's going to warm up. I know it is. Uh, and then some dwarf runner beans here, which are just starting to flower and we'll get some on there. Had a few slugs as well. So it's just a case if you've got any really badly damaged leaves there, um, I'm just going to pick those off. Um, and they will be absolutely fine. So the thing, if you're growing any veg like this in containers is of course, you've got to make sure that you keep them watered. They will dry out very quickly, much faster than if you're growing them in the soil, especially if you've got them in a sunny position. So it's a case of checking them on a regular basis. Occasionally, if it's very hot, I will actually stand them on saucers so that they can absorb that little bit of extra moisture. But what I tend to do is water them every other day or something like that. Check the compost if it feels dry. These aren't too bad uh, at the moment, but give them a drink. And I'm also giving them a liquid feed. So in the watering can like this, there is a, a liquid feed in there. So I would just give them a, uh, a feed over the top there. And that just makes sure that we're keeping them nice and healthy and green. And they will soon fill out and make some nice new growth. So in the next few weeks, couple of months or so, we'll be getting lots of things off this. The other thing I've got in pots is I've done some early potatoes at various stages. You may remember a few weeks ago, I showed you how you can have a, a continual supply of potatoes by staggering the planting. This is one of the first pots I did. There's another one over there younger than another one younger than that. So we can harvest them at regular intervals and get them when they're at their best, which is what we want. Now, this one has been in here for um, about, I think, 11 or 12 weeks. I've lost count, to be honest. And that's about the time for first early. So what I'm going to do is to harvest them is to knock them out into this truck. Now, there may be nothing on this and you can see the wind has battered these. But I'm just going to give that a, a shake and hopefully we'll get some potatoes out of this. Oh yes, they're in there. Probably not going to be as many as I would have liked, but oh, they're pretty good sized potatoes. So we'll pop those down there. Certainly a good boiling of potatoes there. That was just one small tuber that was in there. And there might be some more. No, that's it. I think that is it. So I'm going to shake all the compost off. And that's the original seed potato that was planted. Obviously we won't don't want to eat that one. They would have had more on there. If we'd left it, they would have grown, but we've still got a boiling of potatoes on there. So what I'm going to do is to just loosen this compost up because I'm not going to throw this compost away. Seems a shame, doesn't it? This is, you know, to throw this onto the garden or get rid of it. We can recycle this. Now I wouldn't grow potatoes in this again, but I could use it to fill some of the pots to grow the veg. Might add a little bit of extra fertilizer for it, but what it is perfect for is growing salads, lettuce, that type of thing, because they only need a very low nutrient uh, compost. So most of the nutrients will have been washed out or used by the potato. So what I'm gonna use is some of this, and I'm gonna show you now how to sow some salads.
Right, so there we go. That's the old potato compost, which I'm going to use to grow some salads, uh, lettuce and all the different salad leaves. Now, a little bit like when I grow the potatoes, you don't want all your new potatoes to be ready at the same time. Same with lettuces. So the idea is to stagger the sowing. So what we do is we grow them in pots like this. These are really handy. These are coming to the end of their life now. This is Lolo Rossa, quite a nice lettuce. And there's still another week or so is picking off this one, but then that will go and I will empty that compost out uh, and start again. This is uh, a mixed leaf, uh, lettuce leaf here, so the red and the green ones in there. Um, these were sown exactly four weeks ago today, so that's the sort of growth you get in four weeks and these are just about ready now to keep picking them and we don't pick them all from one end, we pick them from all over, it thins them out as we do it and they'll keep going for about six weeks or something like that. So when I'm getting to this stage, I now need a third bowl, um, which I'm going to sow um, using some of this compost. And there's all sorts of different, you know, lettuce leaves and um, different types of salads that you can get. So there's a, a really good selection out there. So it's nice to vary it a little bit. I'm going to grow a, a red and a green salad bowl one here. So I've got my container. This is just a, a plastic container made from recycled plastic. These will last for years and years. And um, the good thing about this one that we use is the base will clip off. So you've actually got a saucer there which you can take off completely so you can use it with or without um, so that's really good if you want to go on a windowsill where you don't want the water to drain through onto the windowsill and damage it um, and it also holds a little bit of water there so even outside in hot weather it's almost like a little reservoir of water so they don't dry out quite as quickly so all I'm going to do is to get some of this compost in here and which will be perfectly okay. I think there was a little potato there somewhere. I'm sure I saw a potato. Oh well, if it grows, it grows. And we're not going to firm it too much. I'm just going to roughly level that, just light firm, and get a, a levelish surface. We don't have to be too precise, so just level that round. So we've got an even surface to, to sew on like that. So that, that's going to be absolutely fine. Give it a little tap and then I can get rid of this out of the way. And then it's a case of sowing the seed thinly. Now, this packet of seed will probably have about, doesn't tell me on that one, but let's have a look at this one, about 1,200 seeds. So obviously we don't need all of the seeds in here. We're probably only gonna need maybe 100, 150 seedlings, which will provide masses and masses. So I'm gonna just scatter them very thinly if you don't want to do it this way, you can just put some onto the palm of your hand and just sprinkle them evenly. So it's just a case. Don't worry if there's some closer than the others. This is what we call broadcast sewing, that you can shake it side to side, whichever way you find the easiest way to do it. Or as I say, you could put a few on the palm of your hand and just sprinkle them like that. So. The secret is, is to get them fairly evenly so you're covering all the compost like that. And that's more than enough on there. And then what we need to do is cover them up with about quarter to a half inch of compost. So we're looking at about five millimetres. Now you can use a sieve if you want, or you could just sprinkle some very thinly. I like a sieve because it covers them all the same way. So it's just a case of shaking that fine compost over the seedlings till they disappear and we've got as I say about five millimeters of compost on there and that is it if you sow in lots of different types write a label stick a label in probably put a sowing date on there so that you know in a month's time you can then sow another one and if you've got three or four bowls like this you can literally have lettuce and salad leaves right the way from spring through virtually till Christmas um, so you, you're never without and of course the last thing I would do with that is just give this a drink of water stand it outside somewhere nice and cool and in four weeks time it will have turned into that it's as simple as that
Well, thank you for watching Pots and Trowels. And remember, everything that we've done is on YouTube and Facebook. So please look back at all the different subjects that we've covered. Next week, we're going to be looking at lovely lupins. So we'll see you then. Bye.